Thank you, Sam. And thank you, everybody, for being here. I know that you have a choice. You could be at home in your gym jams watching Game of Thrones. <laughs> but instead, you're here. So thank you. You're a delight. Um, I said that I would read um, a poem, ooh, a poem uh, from my time living in Philadelphia, which was brief but very eventful. <laughs> so this is called, It's Impossible to Keep White Moths. It's impossible to keep white moths from flying out of my mouth. I'm 25. I paint the door blue. I go in when he tells me to stay out. Next to a billboard in Philadelphia that says your message here, I am sewn into a dress. On Broad Street, ravens lurk on the Divine Lorraine Hotel, as if to say, always a corpse flower, never a bride. <laughs> Facing south, I can make myself apologize for anything. My voice is thick, a shroud of bells. But will I listen? What I hear in the dark is my own blood stalking me, like a drunk boy, wild on cheap gin, swinging his hammer to nail a tree swallow flat to a barn door. A bird is a vessel. It carries a field. There are nights when I sleep on the couch and lift macrame lace to my cheek from a hope chest. Outside, a teenager shoots, a teenager shoots, a teenager. The cops come to measure the street. They ask me, what did you see? I saw a hole in the hole of the picture. When he comes home late from his fight at the bar, I hold a cold rag steady to his knuckles. I think I can love someone who cares enough to bruise for me. He touches his thumb to the corner of my mouth, pulls back my lip to consider my teeth. Um, so a lot of the poems in this book are about my experiences with um, violent and abusive controlling relationships. And so one of the things that, became, that I became obsessed with after that experience was um, creating an exact history of what had happened so that I could make sure that it never happened to me again. Um, and so um, I wrote this poem in that vein. I stole the, the title of this poem from Sylvia Plath, and um, the epigraph was by Lucy Brock Bredo. The Brute, Brute Heart. After Pennsylvania, I couldn't breathe. The facts are, I drove all night through the mountains to get away from him. I cut up my credit cards to prove I would not leave him. I woke up in the hospital to bone saw, brush fire, thraldom. The pieces were out of order, there was glass in my cheek. I tried to swallow an entire bottle. I tried to leave without giving away my name. I was not lost. I listed no forwarding address. There was a reason why I named the dog Valor. If I was silent, I'd learn the virtue of protecting my mouth at least. I was going home to the house between the cemeteries, to the red bud, the willow trees, the heavy muck wet woods I loved. And in my absence, the house had been torn down to make more space for the dead. I stood there breathing. It felt like sliding a hand through loose dirt, looking for tendrils and pockets of air. It's easy to be angry about how much hope there is in reaching. The whole house gone, and so many little monuments to the wrong thing. In the bare yard, all of my good trees still frame the hole where the house had been standing. In my new life, whatever I claimed, I didn't feel it was mine. How easily I could be a river dragged, a gray car raised up from the bottom dripping. Already I was on a string, I could be lurched up out of hiding in the evidence tent. <laughs> He took the money. He said I made him crazy. It was my fault. What was wrong with me? How could I ever think I could leave? Was I really so stupid? He said he would call the police. He set my furniture on fire. He said he would drive my dog to the pound if I went out. 
I'd like to say now that he was just a list of grievances. Who else would try so hard on someone so fucking worthless? It is some kind of war proposal that no longer works on me. What I want is a permanent figure. I want a marker here to separate the time before from the time now. One ivied over angel for a woman with no known name and no known history. A monument for the disappearance of X. For the opening of a deep well in which I would tread water. For the blood to tide, for the trees to fall, for 100 years of winter. Um, so, the next poem that I'm going to read, I wrote for a friend of mine um, who used to tell me stories about myself in which I was like the scrappy heroine whose luck was about to change. <laughs> and this was really helpful to me during this period of my life where I felt like nothing would ever be okay again. This is called Dear Katie. Understand, I need these fragments. To tell it once is not enough. I have a hundred holy objects, everything looked upon to break. Time will pass, time will pass me, attaching mile marker threats to every causeway. I know it's useless. I put on every eyeliner I own. I draw the shape, a different eye, to see this. I map the innocent spill of color to my ear. Look, I'm already half an emerald. Lit and limited, I am cut. Now that I can't unsmudge the lines for any reason, I am difficult. He takes the high road, I take the thorn hedge. Katie, I can't find a way to talk about this, but it always happens. I have no standing with the men in my life. You are the only one who ever asks me, are you eating? Come close, too close, get out. It's a blunt-edged system. And when did I begin to choose this type of man who loves to protect me from himself? Lately, I hold your name in my mouth like a talisman because we are never afraid of the same things. Remember the dead dog we found on the bridge road? A coyote, I said. Raised as I was near a cemetery, I always assumed some authority over the departed. Stray magic. Lies about the natural world comfort me, I admit. Like if a tree feels something when another tree is fucking up her life. I believe in patterns, shapes, pinnate, world. I remember, too, the accordion doors of the Blue Line train and the way it spit me out, pissed drunk, on the O'Hare platform, crying, because I wasn't sure if I'd hit him or if I'd only wanted to. I was trying to starve myself out of a feeling, signals and timelines. And if the train comes out of the tunnel before I count to 10, then I'm not the most fucked thing. And if not, then when? My own mouth bleeding is a nice round number. On your couch, I fall asleep with puke in my hair, and I dream that I'm trapped in a water tower. Katie, I wake up saying. Um, I'm going to lighten this up just a little bit. <laughs> Not a lot of kind-hearted anecdotes about my life. But uh, I wrote this poem for my dog, Valor, who um, is like the most anxious dog on earth. And when I first got Valor, she was so anxious that she couldn't be left alone. And in the first two years that I had her, she ate. 27 dog beds. Um, she once ate a thunder shirt off of her own body. <laughs> um, but I, it was a good. It was good that we found each other because I was very needy at the time. And she really needed me, so it worked out. But at some, at some level, I had to be like, I, I actually have to go to Target sometimes. I need to be alone for just like 20 minutes. So this poem is called "March's March." We go on forward. I go on floating my face in a map of Lake Michigan, blue there as logically as anywhere else. When he leaves, I stop washing the cups, I stop cleaning the floors. 
I don't have the patience to identify whether dirt is different in the hue of his absence, if there is less of it, if it possesses a graver, more articulate sense of itself, grown worldly and suffering. Water lurks in the drain like it's gawking. My mother says, why not date yourself for a while? <laughs> Accordingly, I listen to all seven Harry Potters. I go for long walks in a circle and insult Scalia on Facebook because I'm trying to win me over and these are my interests. <laughs> the radio is a dick to me. Pop songs are barbed with revelations that make the people who listen to pop songs return with a change of heart. Brianna, I tweet. I need you to be okay, and not okay, at the same time as me, together in the cycle. I adopt a dog I keep as my shadow. Every morning she cries when I leave, and I think finally someone gets it. I force myself to take time like a pill that stops my pulse, but just for a minute. Time collects around 4.30, refusing to move. I leave the dog for an hour, and she chews up her bed, a blue blanket, or her cage door, and I say, you can't keep doing this. And I say, what am I supposed to do? And I say, you don't understand. I need to leave you every day I need to leave. And then I'm just going to read uh, one more poem. This poem is called Your AC. Eurydice, the tree is full of cicadas. I hear them building their city of wet glass, hissing at night when the tree moves like hair, when thousands of their bodies pulse in the low-lit, humid air, pink in the streetlight when the first drops hit, and the line of rain follows like a wall of birds, walls off the whole bird-heavy sky. There comes a point when you have to hold the man responsible for what he did. I have decided it's degrading to say, I let him. I say my name into the open cellar, covering my eyes. I will leave myself out of it. A tree falls over my door, but I don't touch it. I never could convince myself that the shell of those insects is only a shell. <laughs> After nine days of rain, I don't walk alone in the fields. I don't pick up the phone when he calls me. How will I know myself? How bitten? Shade? He says, I love only you, and every time a woman I know disappears down the long hallway of a bar with him, I do not say to her, couldn't you trust me that if the man could stand to be loved, I would have done it? Come out into the new wet earth, pull the leaves away from your skin, Eurydice. Ivy on the linden tree, river of pale trash rolling down Asher Hill, gutter flood. I'm here in the hail trampled yard, bright landscape, our flecked debris. It's ending, Eurydice. So I stand in my coat. We're almost a whole shadow now from far away. Thank you. Mm -hmm.